Hello guys, I'm really happy to be able to see all of you today because uh, it was not easy for my town and I will let you know but please confirm that you can hear me and you can see me well because you know I have this very typical phobia that something does not work well so can you hear me well? Please confirm. Yeah, uh, thank you. Also, I would like to tell you and to warn you that right now everything seems fine in Lutsk and uh, like we did not have air raids alarms uh, within a couple of last hours. And uh, But we do have problems with electricity. I will explain it later. So in case something goes wrong, I uh, run out of internet or uh, the electricity is off, uh, don't be worried because this is what is going on around the town. So uh, please like remember, I hope that we will be able to chat for all the time that we want, for an hour, for an hour and a half, uh, depending on your questions and uh, like my enthusiasm. But if uh, the lights go out or the internet go out, don't be super worried. I will um, like send you a message. But uh, today uh, there were lots of problems in my city and uh, it can be that like you don't have electricity, you don't have internet, you don't have mobile internet. So uh, like take your time, please. I know many of you asked me uh, questions, whether everything is okay, but... <clears throat> Um, but anyway, um, so uh, today in the morning, Russians repeated a huge uh, missile attack on the infrastructure of various Ukrainian cities. And uh, uh, Lutsk was among those cities for a very long period. We were lucky that no missiles reached our infrastructure or our ground. But today, one of our electro stations was destroyed. And this electro station by three Russian missiles, many of uh, which were stopped by Ukrainian air defense, but some still um, like... Um, destroyed that infrastructure and as a result we have problems with electricity, we have problems with internet, we have problems with water. For example, right now I don't have running water in my house, but I am lucky to have electricity and this means it's pretty warm. The candle that I have put behind me is like more symbolic because in the name of our stream, I have mentioned like candles and I like candles, but uh, luckily now we have electricity and it seems to me like I live uh, in the center of the city and uh, very often the center is more like protected. I don't know, it has a smaller electro station that is not that interesting for Russian orcs. But because they like cutting down, um, they like cutting down electricity for larger districts. And uh, now I think like half of uh, my city does not have lights, as it's also as a result of that does not have water and uh, also problems with mobiles and other stuff. But uh, as a result of this. Russians are losing the war and uh, they mm, act like terrorists because, um, yeah, it may be that I have um, poor connection. Is it okay right now? So I have this message for internet connection, so please forgive me then. But um, um, I have to tell you that, uh, so from time to time such things may happen. I then have a notice on my um, screen that like you have poor internet connection, but we can wait for it to get corrected. And um, well, uh, Russians act as terrorists. They lose on the battlefields, they uh, lose uh, in uh, contrast to Ukrainian armed forces and uh, thanks to our bravery and the support of our allies. And what do they start? Uh, they start destroying infrastructure. Uh, they try uh, energetic terror, uh, making people like cold, making people stay in the dark. But I don't know, how do they plan to win <laughs> using these tactics? What can it give them? nothing and also in one of my uh vlogs i have already told you that if they really believe they can win 
uh, they would never destroy the infrastructure of the cities they hope could have been a part of uh, Russia. But now they realize they've lost and what they do, they simply terrorize people. And uh, this is so um, primitive and um, like it only makes Ukrainians uh, stronger. But in in general, I can tell you that uh, many cities right now suffer from that. People buy warm clothes, people think about alternative sources of uh, heating, uh, people uh, think uh, what to wear. Um, also, you have uh, taught me that this kind of uh, power outages that we have are called rolling power outages, and we have uh, many of them. Uh, and uh, we have many of uh, these rolling power outages when you know that for a particular moment of time you don't have like uh, your uh, lights on and then for four hours another block is uh, without power and so slowly by slowly the whole city saves the energy. I also know that many of you try uh, have similar experiences, uh, luckily not because of war but because of other um, reasons and um, anyway this is going to be a difficult um, uh, difficult winter, we understand that, but it is not going to be our last winter, and for Putin it is the last winter, so we all focus on that. And um, now I will be ready to answer your questions. I know there are some trolls coming from time to time, but I really like even don't feel worried about these comments. I don't pay attention to them. So uh, do you ignore them? I don't have moderator so far. Many of you ask whether I have one. Maybe in future I will, but right now we are working without, and uh, that's why there are. Uh, questions that uh, I will omit if I feel they are not real questions but just the Russian propaganda stuff and you know that Russians are toxic and you never want to come in close uh, contact with something um, toxic. Good, now I will uh, try to get closer to your uh, questions and I will be, I'm always very grateful for uh, you joining our stream. If you like it, like it, <laughs> so that my channel becomes more visible and I believe, like, it's not, of course, it's always good, like, for a vlogger to know that he is watched, but at the same time, I believe that people need to know more about Ukraine as this war uh, continues. Um, so, um, yeah, I know that in um, um, Florida there are power outages, so uh, let's have a look at the questions that uh, we have, and um, you know that I'm slow at reading. Um, yeah, you can buy me coffee and become my patron, as someone commented, you can find the links on my channel. and. Okay, I see lots of good things that you're saying, but uh, no questions so far. And maybe soon I will come across. I don't see question marks, you know, like as a teacher, you've said I'm a teacher and I'm looking for question marks and there are no question marks. Um, also, I invite you to watch our next series of uh, Soviet Myths Debunked. It will premiere tomorrow and there we will have a real tour to Khrushchev Lab. That was our first with Sasha experience of field work and we enjoyed it greatly. Let me know tomorrow in the comments if you like videos like that, that combine um... Okay, a question about my last name used. Like, I don't think it's difficult to find me, to find my identity, and I don't plan that my region will be occupied by Russians. If it will be occupied, I will, like, either fight <laughs> with Ukrainian armed forces or I will try to escape. I will not stay here during the occupation if I have this possibility. I don't think it's so easy to erase everything about yourself. Plus, if you want to be an influencer, if you want to speak about your country, if you want to change people's opinion about something, you have to demonstrate yourself as a real person. So I'm not sharing something super personal, but at the same time, I'm not hiding anything. 
Uh, because like Ukrainians have to be brave in everything they do. And when so many people are fighting in the real battlefield, and then uh, me talking uh, comfortably, I even have lights in my house, talking to you is kind of uh, like, I, can, I, I don't have enough consciousness to worry for myself. And greetings to UK and Florida. Uh, well, a question, how can you support uh, me personally? If you like my projects, you can become my patron or buy me a coffee. You can find the links on the channel. And traditionally, I use them for the production of Soviet Myths Debunked because this is a different kind of project that needs more high quality editing and I hope you 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 feel the difference because for example my mom she loves this myth much more than my vlogs <laughs> she said this looks already more professional so and I think about some other ideas that can be interesting so maybe uh, would a thousand coal stoves be helpful? Coal is still available from EU for heat in emergency. Well, coal was also available here, I think, some kind of, and people will think about different alternative sources of heating, uh, starting from various power generators that can work for big houses and also for uh, various, I don't know, there are such generators, like you learn so many, uh, things like uh, normally you don't need for example there are generators or something power station that you can uh, charge from electricity and then they work like power stations for a long period of time and they can help you in a house to have some uh, light and some warmth also people buy portative things for cooking like you can uh, get warm tea because you know it's winter and in winter it's getting cold in Ukraine and when you don't have water you don't have electricity you don't have central heating and in Kyiv and many other cities people don't have central heating and this is kind of uh, difficult all of that together like just for a second uh, I am not even comparing it to the experiences people have in war zones but simply imagine like your evening without electricity, without warmth, without water, without internet. And that's all just because you're Ukrainian, just because you want your country to be independent and because you're strong enough, you manage to stop Putin and then get this terror. Of course, we all know that terrorists never achieve what they want, but uh, like we have to suffer for a certain period of time and that's what we are doing right now but believe me you see ukrainians are strong uh, and uh, that's why we think a lot a lot about uh, products and appliances that can help us thank you to those who <laughs> love me and support me and i love you too and i extremely value the community that gathered around my channel it's an honor to be a part of you and sometimes i don't even believe that just like you have come to my channel, like why you're so cool. Um, are they still welcoming Ukraine civilians in other countries for safety? As far as I know, yes, maybe some conditions changed, maybe financial support uh, is not that big, I don't know, because it's difficult, I understand it's difficult for the countries of the European Union and other countries that support us to spend so much money on Ukrainian civilians. And I'm really grateful to those families, uh, to those countries that accept Ukrainians and support them during this difficult uh, time so that is important uh, a, like a troll tells me that uh, Moscow will capture Kiev for by Christmas and to make it even more realistic we perhaps this year will celebrate Christmas with the rest of uh, the Christian world on the 25th of December. I don't know if you knew that, but for a very long period of time, been closely connected with Russian Orthodox Church, Ukrainian Orthodox Church, uh, did not switch to a calendar and continue celebrating it according to the old style. So our Christmas was on the 7th of January, like the Christmas Eve on the 6th and the 7th is the holiday. But then uh, it was pretty difficult because being close to Europe, communicating with people, it's so weird, like you celebrate Christmas on the 25th and then we celebrate Christmas on the 7th. And like, uh, we don't know when to congratulate him, whom it's difficult for work. And also I personally, 
did not like to celebrate Christmas after New Year because then it looks like New Year is a greater holiday than Christmas. And that was a Russian uh, plan, by the way, too. One of that myths that they created, they wanted to like uh, develop this godless philosophy and to distract people's attention from Christmas and to attract the New Year, making New Year the main holiday, the main winter holiday. And then uh, slowly discussions appeared and with this independence of the Ukrainian Orthodox uh, Church, more and more people started speaking about the celebration of Christmas on the 25th of December and this year. Personally, my family already celebrated it a couple of years. Uh, that way. Are people going to move to villages this winter if possible to live in houses that can be heated by wood stoves as opposed to apartments heated by internal stations? I don't know, I cannot tell you that's a tendency because many of Ukrainian villages they uh, still need uh, more development in their infrastructure and uh, people who like um, I know that, for example, in the US, uh, many people drive. In Ukraine, not that many people drive. And internet connection can be worse in the village. So there are some things that um, make people stay in the cities. And um, But that might be a good idea for, uh, like, for, for some. In general, I think that even COVID epidemics led to this fact and later... Um, war in Ukraine that more and more people choose living in smaller towns and smaller villages because it's safer, it's easier and um, I think it's a healthy tendency. And uh, um, can a question, can Kyiv move population west this winter so citizens do not freeze and starve? I don't think citizens will starve and freeze, I hope it won't be like that plus movements of citizens, like millions of people, that is really difficult, plus uh, living cave empty is not wise. And uh, there are so many people who returned to Kiev when it was still very dangerous to stay there, so perhaps cold will not stop them from staying in their home, and cave is very symbolic. So, uh, like, I cannot tell you I'm a huge fan of those uh, evacuations. Uh, when it's the real um, front line with missiles, with guards shooting, of course, people have to leave. But in other cases, perhaps we have to, to think how not to freeze and how not to starve. So uh, government won't do things like that. I, I did not hear about plans of this kind. Um, Greetings to Netherlands uh, and uh, thank you. For your, um, how is my mom doing during all this? She is well. Like, <laughs> and no mom enjoys things like that. And uh, they are always super worried. And when you have to go out, and when, for example, I'm at the university during uh, the air raid, she believes like the university can be a target. And we know that in many cities, university is a target. And then you go to the bomb shelter. And these bomb shelters, guys, by the way, you don't think about that. They are super cold. And I know some people, some acquaintances of mine who say that they've got lots of calls to their internal organs because they had to spend hours and they, for example, did not manage to grab a coat or something. Uh, so many people choose, for example, to go out of buildings and the university is close to a park and you feel safer in a park and then Russian terrorists throw missiles on parks in Kiev and you realize, okay, maybe park is not the safest place to. So. Um, uh, yeah, for example, today on Saturday, because of this complicated program, students also had classes. I did not have to work, but students have classes and they spend like lots of hours in a bomb shelter. They came to study and it all started and a real explosions in the city. So they were not allowed to move out of the bomb shelter and it did not like turn out uh, uh, simple. So that was not good. So mom is super worried. Uh, mom wants to have a shower, but she cannot. And we did not uh, wash the dishes after the... Um, thank you for buying me coffees. We did not wash the dishes after the dinner and other stuff. But maybe 
after the stream we will get this opportunity so i like i am not grumbling or how do you say it because i know people have uh really uh bad conditions and i'm like having my warm tea that i boiled for the stream um like this video my subscribers remind me of that and when you like it it becomes more visible and that's important you know uh, what do you think about the possibility of Belarus taking an active part in the war? From time to time, sometimes I think it's very likely. And for example, two days ago, I was like 100% sure they will do that. I repacked my go-to bag and so on. And uh, then I realized like they don't have enough troops. And even from... Uh, the Belarus side, perhaps this will be Russian troops moving. Uh, Belarus gave them its territory and all the rights on the country, honestly. So like Americans give us land lease on weapons, Belarus gave land lease on, on their country, its infrastructure. And it's so very, very sad. Uh, I don't think like super massive attacks will be from uh, this part. Sometimes they say it's more likely they will... Uh, attack from the north, Chernihiv and Kiev. Others say this time they will try to come to Volin and Lviv, Lutsk and Lviv, for example, to cut down the supplies of the weapons uh, that our allies provide us with. And um, like I don't think this will be something big. I believe that they will hit us with missiles and maybe drones. That is very likely. So we won't have Russian soldiers and tanks on the streets, which is good, but they can destroy much of our infrastructure and they did that uh, today. Uh, I did not check by the way from which direction the missiles came to my city, because sometimes it's from the Black Sea, sometimes it's over the Sea of Caspi, Caspian Sea, or maybe from Belarus, like, uh, I don't know. I, I did not check it. Uh, well, uh, someone tells me that I have to leave Ukraine. No, Ukraine is very good. Ukraine is much better than Putin expected. And I feel like he is the one who will end not only his regime, but also the present image of Russia. So you see, it's not Ukrainians who leave the country now, even during the war. We've adjusted and we've adapted. It's Russians who leave Russia very quickly. Um uh, okay, hello from Uzbekistan. I am saddened that our people are welcoming Orc refugees into our cities. We should not allow them to enter. Uh, thank you so much and greetings to Uzbekistan. By the way, uh, we often speak about other countries that we want to visit. I would like to visit Uzbekistan one day because I think this is a totally different experience and a different culture. I would like to learn more. And uh, I feel like really sorry about the countries like Georgia, like Uzbekistan, uh, like Finland for a short period of time that so many Russians came down. Uh, Russians have this very bad uh, habit. They don't like to, uh, you know, that's, uh, in Rome do as Romans do. They don't like to adjust to the rules of the country they come in. They start changing the rules and then uh, Putin can come to liberate <laughs> so don't let them like even if they cross the border even if these are good people good Russians who don't want to stay in their country and change something in their country but escape their country even under these conditions uh, don't let them rule in your country don't let them change uh, your values your ID because that's what they've used to do for centuries and Uzbekistan perhaps also knows what is it Mm. Okay, mm, thank you for calling me an inspiration and all of my subscribers are an inspiration for every vlog. Thank you for watching and uh, thank you for the support that you give. Um, okay, I'm looking for questions. And oh, 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 I saw a question and I lost the question just a second. Uh, 
what uh, what was it like being interviewed by Silicon Curtain? You've seen I've left a link yesterday. We have talked with Jonathan and it was very interesting and very inspirational. I'm grateful that he invited me for a conversation. If you like his channel, subscribe to Silicon uh, Curtain and I think he's doing a very important job. And this is not a surface analysis of Soviet Union, Russia and uh, war in Ukraine, but a more deep analysis and I value that a lot because I understand why me as Ukrainian needs that but it's so important when people like Jake Bro, like uh, Jonathan think when they help and they talk about Ukraine and maybe some uh, people in the West um, rely on them more so I'm super grateful because like yeah. For a Ukrainian, you don't have other choice but speak about your war. And people like uh, Jonathan, they, they have this choice and uh, they choose to think about us. Yeah, the candle. <laughs> I've checked uh, if it's burning. Greetings to Wisconsin. Uh, and yeah, winter time and we have rain and like we also have this cold spells. Uh, and yeah, promoting terrorism, trolls promote terrorism. Putin is the supreme orc and supreme troll, and he also uh, promotes terrorism all over the world, and that is a problem. Uh, good. Yeah, trolls help spread the channel. I agree, that's why I treat them like a spice to something. Uh, thank you for calling Ukrainians brave and we are really brave because like we have the support of the world too. That is very important and Ukrainians contrary to Russians are grateful and we realize that uh, we need your support, we rely on your support and like the world, the second world war was not won just by Russians but but the union of uh, people and the same is about this war. Of course, Ukraine has become a battlefield. It's not the best thing for us to experience. Uh, but uh, at the same time, the support is definitely something that makes us strong and uh, gives us a possibility to like fight. Um, good. Um, oh my God, uh, Russia and USSR, is that knowledge typical from public education or have you spent considerable study on the subject? Like I was born at the very end of the USSR and uh, much of the USSR stayed in the countries that were once occupied by it. Lots of sentiments, it's a huge part of uh, culture, it's present in architecture, it's it was present in monuments, in the names of the streets, in uh, parts of the books. Uh, so it was a reality and I cannot tell you that I need to prepare myself specifically on this surface level. If you want me to identify Sovok, as we call it, like Sovok, um, that, that, that is a humiliating name for USSR. If you want me to identify its, um, how do you call it, remains, <laughs> it's easy. But then I make small researches to dig deeper if I want to be correct with the dates, decisions, number of people, for example, who died. And I always use trustworthy sources because I'm a researcher and I cannot like use just Wikipedia or something. I have to double check, triple check, and only then use it in our Soviet myths debunked. But I think uh, many people believe that it finished and it did not. Uh, Soviet Union for Putin exists and uh, he continues like uh, recreating his empire. It doesn't matter how he can call it, like Great Russia, Russian Federation, uh, the USSR or whatever. But the idea is just the same, to keep people in prison, to cut their freedom and to look for enemies everywhere, but not inside their society. So I combine this like knowledge that my um, background gave me. And I think that's why there are lots of interesting things that Ukrainians, Poles, Lithuanians can give about uh, this period. And um, this, there are lots of things you can discover in Eastern Europe. And I hope it will become another very popular destination. Um, <clears throat> In future, so have I seen TV show The Americans? No, I don't. Do you advise? Um, good. 
thank you for liking Lutsk. Lutsk is a nice city. There are many um, cities like that uh, in the western part of Ukraine. And I like this slow pace of living. I find it very good for <laughs> mental health. Um, good. Oh, my God. Uh, do you find that use of Russian language in Ukraine has significantly decreased since the war began? Yes. And especially in this uh, public uh, sphere. And, of course, it has nothing to do with various governmental decisions or something like that. Um, because... Uh, this is just the true decisions of people. People hear this language as the language of aggressor. At the same time, there are lots of Ukrainian soldiers, brave Ukrainian soldiers who fight for Ukraine and speak Russian. So it's, it has never been a problem. You know, there are no Nazis in Ukraine. There are Russified Ukrainians and Ukrainians who want to return back to uh, their... Um, want to return back to their cultural heritage, to return their cultural identity. And I have, for example, some Russian-speaking friends who tell me that they cannot that easily switch, but what they promise to themselves is that their children will be speaking Ukrainian. So we have this, like, not a proverb, but an idea. It's not important what was the language of your parents, if they were Russified or you were Russified, but it's important that Ukrainian is the language of your uh, children. And, uh, of course, also in media, everywhere, I can honestly tell you, I don't want to listen to songs in Russian. Uh, there were many on, ra on the radio before the start of this war. Now you cannot hear them. They are not prohibited, but people don't want them because this is the language of uh, people who come to kill us. And, you know, Putin is very much about the liberation of Russian speaking. And many people say, oh, my God, we don't want to be liberated. Uh, will the Ukrainians removed to Russia by force be able to return home one day? I believe so. This is a task that we must accomplish, but um, but um, I don't know how can it be done. And also, it's so difficult to believe uh, that such things are possible in the 21st century, real deportations of people from their homes to the country that came to kill and destroy them. And that is a tragedy. I, I don't know how, for example, Red Cross can close its eyes and sometimes even support so some of the movements or, the, or humanitarian corridors to Russia. These are not humanitarian corridors. These are corridors to hell for many of these people. And this is a tragedy. Um, so two questions. One question, what was my native language, uh, Ukrainian or Russian? Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Uh, I can speak Russian. I don't want to. And when I come, for example, to Lithuania, where people also know Russian, I never speak Russian. I always speak English because English is lingua franca for me now. Uh, but like I can read, I can speak in Russian, but Ukrainian is my native language. I think with Ukrainian, I love in Ukrainian, I feel in Ukrainian, so Ukrainian is my mother tongue. And also the question was uh, about Ukrainian uh, morale. Is it high in our spirit? Yes. Yes, it is uh, on the peak. And uh, like... Um, People uh, think that uh, we will not like stop. We we feel that we are winning this war, and you know, like the Russians, they are surprised at how brave we are, and uh, the fact that we do not like uh, stop, and they cannot terrify us. When they uh, shoot us with kamikaze drone, people open windows and start shooting at these drones. You have seen lots of videos how Ukrainian uh, civilians have no fear and no mercy to Russian soldiers. And in Russia, what do they do? They escape, they flee the mobilization, they have this old equipment, they have old Soviet missiles that cannot hit the targets they want to reach, they have very poor... Uh, equipment, uh, medical help, and they've lost 67,000 soldiers already. So that is a very serious thing. And uh, look at their leader. Like He has friends in uh, North Korea, 
than where else. So, um, uh, like, I don't see any positive future for uh, Russia as long as they uh, are ruled by people like Putin and as long as their society has nothing against that. So this is really sad. And uh, also a question that is very important and I wanted to speak about that is the um, Kachovka Dam and will they blow it up? Uh, that is going, it, it is possible. Like with Russia, they, from one point of view, it's totally uh, illogical. All this war is illogical. All they did, like it has no sense at all. And uh, um, this can lead to a huge ecological catastrophe. This can uh, lead uh, to death of uh, hundreds, thousands of innocent people like who simply sleep in their houses and they will get flooded. But uh, during the Second World War, uh, Soviet generals decided to blow up um, the dam, the Dnieper Dam, and 200,000 people, innocent people, were dead because of that. And... Um, mm, uh, they don't care not only about people they kill in Ukraine or elsewhere. They don't care about their own soldiers. They don't care about uh, lives, human lives. And that is like, it's very difficult to fight with an enemy like that that does not have any moral uh, things. Like you cannot, they don't care about anything. They don't care about their own people. So, um, uh, this is uh, very kind of uh, obvious. And uh, also, uh, thumbs down to uh, Russian uh, trolls because the messages that uh, they spread are very primitive. <laughs> they don't make me feel angry anymore. Uh, how much stress do I feel? What do I do to relax? Well, I feel much stress and I feel muscle tension and everything. And I, by the way, um, like I swim, I uh, walk and um, I still feel stress and it's impossible to not to feel stress when you live in the country at war. So uh, someone wrote me about the celebration of victory in Paris with champagne. So maybe I have to think about this. Uh, but this is a very long period of time when we feel very traumatized, very stressed. And um, uh, that is uh, like a period that, like, I don't know, you cannot go in through this, you cannot avoid stress. So uh, just like uh, be patient. That's the only thing I can tell to myself. And... Um, Thank you to, I have many supporters to, uh, of, from Texas and I'm very grateful to that. And I know that you people, you make a difference. And I'm very grateful to those of you who address your politicians, who try to uh, change something. Uh, have I been to Zalishchiki, my grandmother, uh, Brian and Jensky, I'm sorry if I mispronounced, uh, grandmother was pushed out back in 1914, not sure if it was the Russians or Germans who she settled in Canada. So I haven't been there, but I want to. This is a very beautiful uh, location, I know that. And uh, um, it's very picturesque and it was a very famous resort for a long period of time at the beginning of the 20th century. So perhaps this is a must to visit and uh, I want to see it in the uh, future. As Russia is claiming historical rights to Ukraine's territory, perhaps it's time for Ukraine to reclaim the historical Ukrainian territories of uh, Belgorod, uh, Rostov on Don, and Kuban. You're right; these are Ukrainian territories, but Ukrainians like are normal people, and we realize that if we start reclaiming everything, changing the borders, this can lead to global conflicts. And come on, every country can think of 
like some uh, territories that were once yours, but not yours for a couple of centuries already. Why should we uh, change anything? And it's just the Russian habit. Russia is the largest country in the world and still uh, wants more land. What for when they have so many problems on their own territory? Uh, is there a chance of nuclear war from Russian side? Yes, but as a form of suicide because perhaps this will be the last thing that Putin will be able to do and he's very much concerned about his life, you know, he's the one who wants to leave and that's why I think what I am, the majority of Ukrainians are really worried is that they can target um, nuclear power stations. There are many nuclear power stations and they can target them, then they will tell this are Ukrainians who did that because they like doing it and uh, this can lead to serious problems. Look what they are doing on the uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power station. It is six times larger than Chernobyl, and if anything happens to it, it will be a tragedy once again, not only for Ukraine, but very much for Russia, because it's closely located. But they don't care about that. They don't care about world. That's why they have to be stopped. Even if you were neutral to Ukrainians and Russian and you didn't care much now that you see Putin breaks so many international laws, not caring about people's health, environment, economy, then perhaps something must be done to stop him before it is too late. So the chance is always present, but you know we also say that they have so many problems with all of their weapons and bombs and missiles, so perhaps their nuclear <laughs> bombs are also in bad uh, condition. Um, greetings to Finland. I know I have many friends in Finland and uh, you have a beautiful country I would like to visit once and you have experience fighting with Russia. So what is the most items you think need uh, during the winter? if not talking about guns and weapons, uh, various heating appliances, perhaps, and ideas, um, and things that can keep soldiers and civilians warm, starting from clothes and finishing once again with various appliances that are used for that. Uh, that's what I think. Um, okay, more questions. Hmm. Anna, do you agree? It seems Ukraine has very few abyss people, unlike in the US. I think it's because your food is more natural, less processed. Oh, I, I don't know, like I cannot tell you about that, but um, I will honestly tell you what my students uh, say. They travel a lot and many of them studied in the US and even in Europe. And they say they don't like European tomatoes and other vegetables that they lack taste. So, like, I like eating in the countries that I travel. And um, I traditionally enjoy that. But it may be that we still have this markets that are not super expensive farmers organic but we have uh, old ladies selling stuff from their orchards and it may be uh, it may be uh, good like um, so um like i have one friend uh like not a friend but an acquaintance and uh, she's in britain writing a book about uh, odessa cuisine Odessa is a city in Ukraine, a very beautiful city with huge cultural heritage and uh, with uh, like its own traditions, fish, uh, some Jewish heritage also. And she says like everything is so tasty in Ukraine and like including potatoes and that sometimes to get this in the West, you have to pay more and more and in Ukraine, it's still cheap. But uh, once again, I'm not that like obsessed from selling something, they will not then use this pesticides. Uh, and, uh, and sorry, the connection was bad as far as I understand. And uh, so, um, okay, so many questions and reactions on the taste of tomatoes and so on. Um, Good. 
So I hope uh, the day when it is safe to come to Ukraine comes soon and you will be able uh, that you will be able to see uh, many of its beautiful places and to try our food and I'm sure you will like it because Ukrainian food is tasty and the problem is that Ukrainians like to feed people uh, to like <laughs> you but in Russia they make you drink and in Ukraine they make you um, eat a lot Hello from Canada. You once mentioned getting back to writing. What would you like to write about? Political analysis, the future of Ukraine, or uh, fiction? Um, like fiction, I can. I like no political analysis. <laughs> I liked writing short stories. I like writing about history, culture, cuisine, maybe some non-fiction, uh, but about Ukraine and something that can be interesting for you. So I'm thinking about that. Um, uh, is Yoda taller than Putin or are they both just tiny? Yoda is much better than Putin. They cannot be compared. The same as orcs, actually. There are lots of memes in Ukraine that say that orcs are very much offended that they are compared to uh, Russians, <laughs> to Russian soldiers. Uh, do you know Zelensky aged faster uh, during this special military operation? Yeah, he did, because he worries about uh, Ukraine and he does not use that much Botox as a president on high heels does, because he thinks he's immortal, but he's not. He's very, very mortal. He already smells like Lenin, you know. Um, do you have many shortages in my city, food, etc.? Like, we have enough food, we have enough water, but now we don't. We have problems with electricity, we have sometimes problems with uh, uh, internet connection. Uh, and uh, also, um, like, um, but of course, in those very much affected by the war zones, uh, people lack lots of things. Okay, are you still able to do your teaching in the university? Yes, uh, but today I like, didn't spend much of the day in the bomb shelter. And when we have really heavy days and lots of air raids, we are asked to stay at home and continue classes online. Uh, and uh, also, uh, sometimes when it's really hard, we don't have online classes and we change it. Um, <clears throat> And uh, so that's it. But uh, sometimes we are even lucky to have offline classes. And I think that this is really good because it adds up inspiration and uh, so on. Uh, no, my internet connection is not uh, through Starlink. Starlink is used for military purposes and I have ordinary uh, civilian <laughs> internet. Not very good, not very bad, like everybody does perhaps, yeah. How has this war affected you personally the most? Biggest life challenge? Um, I'm not ready to share it. I can easily answer that question, but I'm not ready to share it. Because uh, it is personal. I cannot tell you the love subject. <laughs> Maybe interesting. It's a little bit different. Uh, but like, mm, I have lots of troubles in my life. Uh, and... Uh, like being an optimist and being on TV, I always know how to act and I'm not a loser and I hate like looking like a victim and I never will. Um, but there were some things when you like think of them and you believe so many bad things cannot happen simultaneously and they do. So then perhaps so many good things will happen <laughs> to my country, will happen to me. And... Uh, what do I think about German government? Um, like, for me, I'm not an expert in that, and I don't like people who speak about the things they don't know. I had this very bad feeling at the beginning of this war uh, that uh, German government was ready to close its eyes on uh, what Putin does because uh, Germany is really dependent on Putin gas, and Angela Merkel, for me, was a person who introduced uh, put into global politics and who constantly spoke like, oh, we don't have to provoke him. 
uh, we don't have to, we have to accept him. Russia needs leaders like that. He's not crazy. He's just Russian, you know, and as a result, uh, we have what we have. Uh, but uh, in general, people of Germany, they help a lot. And uh, I'm very grateful because lots of Ukrainian refugees found their new homes and new jobs. And um, in Germany and German people are great. I know many, I have friends in Germany. And you'd say that Germany is no more dependent on Russian gas than it's really good. And um, like, I think that both Ukrainians, Germans, many EU countries, uh, they uh, like felt that it's dangerous to <laughs> be dependent that much on one country. And especially if this country is so popular. Um, do you plan to come to America after Ukraine wins? Well, of course, I would like to <clears throat> see many countries and America is one of them. And uh, uh, the United States, there are lots of places I would like to see. I respect your history. Uh, I respect uh, that uh, uh, you value freedom and democracy. There are lots of problems everywhere. But neither Ukraine nor the U.S. will ever become that stressed and uh, lonely as Russia is. And Denmark, of course, I would like to, um, Henry, uh, Henrik, I would like to ride that underground, <laughs> to sit in the front window and underground without a pilot or driver, how do you call it? Oh, my God, <laughs> very robot experience. But I would like to experience that. I love traveling a lot. There are many countries that are on my list. And <clears throat> actually, I'm a woman. I could, like, uh, escape <laughs> and travel more. But in Greenland, yeah, why not? Mm, uh, but, like, you cannot enjoy uh, life to the full when your country is suffering. And even those of us who are abroad, in beautiful places, in safe places, and uh, um, these people, mm, they suffer and they feel pain. Uh, many of uh, these people have their husbands or wives uh, on the battlefields. And um, it like a Ukrainian can be like, I don't know, in a center of Paris, but with war inside of his or her heart. And uh, like when someone is ill, you worry about when your country is at war and <clears throat> you cannot be fully happy. So I postpone traveling to happier times, but I love traveling. Uh, then uh, there was a question, what subjects do I teach? Well, I teach subjects related with the European Union. I'm the European Union fan, uh, EU communication strategy, for example, or um, sustainable language education and media literacy and political linguistics and um, interpretation, interpreting. And so these are the subjects. And can you give a course description of the classes you teach at the university? Um, drop me a line on my email and I will introduce you to some uh, syllabus of my subjects if you're interested. And, and um, I'm curious about the influence in terms of language and alphabet between Greek and Cyrillic. They are different. Greek and Cyrillic are different. So our church is more under influence of Greece than um, Rome. Uh, is your writing for a paper just a part-time job? Yes, it's a part-time job. I have many part-time jobs and sometimes my mom asks me, what is your profession? What are you doing? Uh, and I'm, so I'm working as Anna from Ukraine because I have many jobs and I like combining it. I cannot imagine myself working, just doing just one thing, uh, long hours. Um, and uh, that's why uh, you would visit Russia with a tank. 
I don't want to visit Russia, even after we win, you know. I don't know why. Maybe Siberia or other things. I don't want to see Moscow. I'm not uh, fascinated with St. Petersburg. I don't like them. Between, are there any similarities between Ukrainian culture and uh, Bulgarian? Yes, I think. And uh, also the alphabet, and we can understand much of the Bulgarian language. And yeah, I know someone is a multitasker, that's how you call it. And I think it's very good. When you are tired of one job, you switch to another and you feel better. So uh, um, those of you who can travel, travel. I think Belarus should be under the same sanctions from the West as Russia. What's your point of view? Yes, yes, I feel more sympathy for Belarus people because they are kinder and at least from time to time uh, they uh, I will see my mom right after I finish the stream because <laughs> she's in the next room uh, yeah I can do translations but I cannot tell you I'm a fan of translations I like oral translation more than written translation but I, I can translate yeah I'm not bad I'm pretty fast uh, in translation, I don't have any pets. I don't. And uh, um, it's always important to take care of yourself first. And I, I know that. <laughs> and, uh, but just come on, like I'm doing lots of things. I like to sleep. Sleep also is very useful for me. And uh, like I'm a person who can, uh, uh, sleep for a long period of time and this makes me uh, feel better um, <clears throat> uh, if you had a pet would you prefer a bird a cat or a dog a cat or a corgi dog uh, yes I like music and I did not listen to music uh, on my earphones for a very long period of time and with the start of this war I returned back to that uh, have you thought about moving away from Ukraine to the EU or the USA? Uh, no, no, never. Uh, I um, like can imagine myself working, cooperating with the EU or the uh, uh, United States or something like working for some international organizations that might be interesting not maybe that much in political sphere but as in cultural sphere or educational sphere because that's uh, the spheres I know more and um, like um, I can imagine myself living somewhere for half a year or for a year but um, living like having home in Ukraine. Favorite toppings on pizza? Something hot and uh, maybe salami and tomatoes, of course. Uh, <laughs> Norway is on my list, but I haven't managed to read something about motorcycle. Okay, a question about uh, Garcia Marquez. I heard you mention Garcia Marquez once. What book or books do you like and in what language did you read them? I have read them in Ukrainian and in Russian previously because like long before, uh, it was pretty difficult to find lots of translations in Ukrainian. Uh, the majority of the market was Russian. So in Russian and in Ukrainian, I don't speak Spanish that well to read Marquez, but maybe one day I will. 100 Years of Solitude, of course. Loving Cholera Time. I love his short stories. And The Scandal of the Century is a set of his uh, newspaper articles I have read recently, and I like it. And Live to Tell the Truth, Vivir para Contarla, his autobiography, I loved it. It took some magic uh, off uh, some of his works, but at the same time, it was pretty interesting to see the cuisine, the kitchen of how many of the stories were written. Um, okay. Um, have you noticed any changes in the wildlife around you? Uh, like I live in the city uh, and uh, not that many. I know that like before the war, many of us spoke about Chernobyl and that 
in Chernobyl, uh, lots of uh, animals returned back to normal, and some species that were almost extinct uh, re returned there, which proves that um, that it is not even the radiation that is the worst enemy of the nature, but humans. And uh, we have some. I have read recently on Facebook that there are not enough sparrows in the cities. I don't know why, <laughs> but you've asked me so. Uh, <laughs> I I haven't tried motorcycle rides so far so far, so I cannot tell you whether I like them or not. I have to first check. <laughs> and um, by the way, we have rain right now. And. Yeah, wind turbines are beautiful, but it's not that easy. Yeah, the Lutsk was attacked today, and we don't have electricity in many uh, regions, many districts of the city, but uh, people were not hurt to that extent. No one died. Uh, my native language is Ukrainian. I can speak Russian, but yeah, I speak English better than Russian, and I'm happy. Uh, is it normal for Ukrainians? Uh, like... Yeah, Ukrainians, many Ukrainians speak uh, languages like English uh, is taught at schools on a very good level right now. And many young, uh, uh, many young uh, adults, like their knowledge of English is pretty good. And <clears throat> in uh, general, I think that there was the more time passing by people uh, we'll learn more and more languages. That's important. Um, okay, I see that you're quarreling. Uh, my views on Mikhail Bulgakov, I have read his books. I cannot tell you I'm a fan. And there was a question about Edgar Allan Poe. I like Edgar Allan Poe. I started reading him back at school and I think he's one of the best masters of the short story. And Bulgakov was Ukrainian by origin, but Russian by his choice. So let it be. UFO activity reported over Ukraine? I haven't noticed any UFOs. I will tell you a joke. Maybe some of you will consider it not politically correct, but that is my family joke. My uh, dad liked wa watching uh, various films about UFO, uh, but I, I cannot tell you he believed 100%, but he entertained himself that way. And he had the joke like that, I'm a hybrid, because he... Uh, came from the aliens. He said, like, those that uh, created Egypt or whatever. So he was by origin an alien, and my mom was an ape. And he said, Lee, you're a hybrid. <laughs> so, like, mom was not offended. <laughs> Have you read The Witcher? And uh, No, I did not, but I watched the film, and I liked it. But perhaps maybe I need... Uh, I need to read because I know the book is very different. Uh, Ukrainian biggest export chicken. <laughs> I know, like, and that's why eggs became very, uh, yeah, hybrids are the best. I know that. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, uh, eggs became very expensive. Somehow their price is connected to the dollar. And you know that uh, currency exchange rate is really high in Ukraine. And uh, uh, and uh, that's why many people discuss how expensive eggs are, like three times more than it was before. Like, um, okay, many of you ask me about, uh, like Ukrainian media is talking about Boris Johnson. We don't know how high his chances are to become a prime minister once again, perhaps not really high, but for Ukraine, he's a great friend. And even in my city, we have a pub, that is named Pop Boris Johnson. It was renamed, it was opened by some refugees from Donetsk region and they named this pub after Boris Johnson. If you need it or if you know Boris Johnson, I will send you a picture, <laughs> right? Drop me an email. So we will see. Uh, I cannot answer your question, what is my favorite Hollywood movies because there are so many of them. And like, um, I cannot answer this question. Yeah, I haven't been to that pub named after Boris Johnson, but maybe one day uh, I will, because I like this pop culture. And Observing the English is also the book that I have once read. Uh, okay, uh, so 
Oh my God, so many questions. Mm. So, 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 so. A shop, the shops still stopped. Like almost everything is okay with shops. Some export like less. For example, if we have these heavy days with lots of air raids, many uh, chain shops that come from Poland or elsewhere, they are closed because they care for their <clears throat> assistance and they are worried about that. Um, so food prices, I cannot tell you that food prices changed dramatically, but for example, with the eggs, it was pretty uh, obvious. Uh, okay, I see that I have problems pronouncing alien. <laughs> Let me know how should I pronounce it. Uh, okay. Maybe a couple more questions and we will wind up because many of you have to go to sleep. My favorite holiday, Easter, I guess, because it's in spring. And you can find my email uh, on the channel. On the, in the description of the channel, I have a link to my email. So if you have something, you can write me if you have any offer of cooperation or whatever. Uh, foreign movies are dubbed in Ukrainian and uh, Ukrainian uh, dubbing is not bad uh, at all. Sometimes we are uh, like winning various competitions. And when you compare it to Russian dubbing, guys, you will be surprised because in Russia, they permit to change the meaning of uh, some films and to give uh, contrary translations. Uh, like for example, I don't know, jokes about Obama, and uh, so on that were not present in the movie and they added yes viking roots are present in ukraine and i think the deeper you dig in ukrainian history the more connections you get and now we feel that once again because there is much unity and support from the viking countries that we feel and i personally also like to think that maybe i have like one percent of viking blood i would like to yeah, I agree that use of subtitles is good for learning languages, but it was always like that in Ukraine, so uh, maybe. Um, <laughs> someone is angry that I cannot see good questions uh, that he or she is asking, but uh, you can always leave your comments below my videos. I read them attentively. I do not always have time to write an answer, uh, but... Uh, I uh, sometimes get the inspiration and then return back to it. And okay, maybe two more questions and a good night. <laughs> Something, how was Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine reacted to the war? Um, they were silent. During this war that started in 2014, uh, they were saying that we have to listen to Russians, we have to accept them because they are our big brothers and you cannot uh, like quarrel with your brothers. You have to accept them and uh, do whatever they tell you. And they even um, blessed uh, Russian uh, soldiers and Kirill. They always speak about them right now. Uh, they are like hiding and uh, uh, they pretend that they don't have close connections with Russia and many, by the way, of the churches turned to uh, a Ukrainian Orthodox Church and that is important. I think it's high time to do so because, um, because. do you plan to stop teaching to become full-time YouTuber or will you do YouTube part-time? Like I plan to develop my YouTube. And let's see the way it goes, because I really like the communication that I have with you. I'm so grateful for many friends that I've got, uh, the inspiration and strength that you give to me, and the fact that you're interested in um, Ukraine. And there are so many things that I want to tell you, not only bad things, uh, but uh, uh, 
thank you for support and thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. I really value that because it helps to grow the channel and to film some more professional videos. Hopefully, it will be interesting and hopefully you will like uh, a video Soviet myths debunked about Khrushchevka and the awful architecture of that period. Thank you for a compliment to my sweaters. That means a lot. And uh, thank you for watching me. And most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. It was a pleasure to spend this evening with you. I'm really happy that we had this opportunity and the lights did not went out. If something goes wrong and I have problems, I will let you know in the community channel as you ask me, but I hope everything will be fine and I will be able to update you with the information about war in Ukraine and the way we win our orcs. Thank you once again and Slava Ukraini.